Hey, Jeffrey Pepper Rogers, back with Guitar Sessions, here to share Richard Thompson's beautiful song, Waltzings for Dreamers. Came out back in 1988 on his album Amnesia, and uh, it's, just a, it's just a great song, a sad song, like a lot of his are, um, and also a, uh, relatively speaking, an accessible intro to his style. He's such an incredible player, and a lot of his stuff can feel hard to approach, but this is a good one to dig into. So uh, drop D tuning for this song. So tune the sixth string down to D, and then put that capo on the third fret. So I'm going to be playing out of D shapes, capo three, which means the song is sounding in the key of F. Um, another uh, key to this song is uh, using hybrid picking, using pick and fingers. So that's what I'm going to be doing, although this can be very much adapted to straight finger picking or playing with a pick, too. Um, so in the lesson, I'm going to um, dig into the basic shapes used and, and the rhythm um, and a couple of little bass lines and other things like that. Um, on Patreon, you can find the complete uh, tab that goes with this that shows everything that I'm doing, plus uh, Richard Thompson's solo interlude, some just lovely little uh, guitar passages um, that you can find the full note-for-note -note detail over there. But uh, let's dig into this song, starting with the shapes. So the first part of the verse, a lot of it is going to be just out of this D5 shape, which is uh, just like a regular D chord, but including all those open strings on the bottom, and uh, leaving out the first string. So um, playing most of the time on D without the first string, without the third in the chord, which is why it's a five. Um, and then there's an A, which um, mostly playing here with just a one finger bar, occasionally adding on that second string, third fret for an A sus four, but mostly that uh, just A with a one finger bar. Um, and then uh, for G, playing mostly this just one finger version of a G, so I'm fretting the, the sixth string five frets above the capo, I'm muting the fifth string. I'm leaning my ring finger a little bit against it so that that one doesn't ring. And then um, playing mostly the open fourth and third strings along with it, which gives me a G5. So you could include the second string open if you wanted, or you could also fret the second string at the third fret. That would keep it as a G5. So those are the three uh, shapes on the first uh, part of the verse. Um, and then we come to this descending up from an A, uh, this part which starts on that A, and then reach over with the, while well, keeping that A in position, reach over with the pinky to um, grab a G bass note under the A. So this is an A over G. And then an E minor, which I'm going to be playing like this, a bar with my index finger on the bottom three strings, second fret. Um, and uh, Richard Thompson, um, actually, I sometimes be reaching over and grabbing that bass note with his thumb. It's just something that I tend to do as a player. So I'm going to be doing it this way with a one finger bar for the E minor. Um, and, uh, and then we're going to go to the G and the A. So the descending part is going to go A, A over G, E minor, A to the G. That's our G5. Back to A again. And those are, we'll run through all these patterns uh, through the whole verse uh, in a minute. But uh, those are all the chord shapes needed for the verse. Um, and uh, just a couple of others um, used in the chorus. Um, so in, uh, sometimes uh, rather than playing the G like this with the root in the bass, he's using a G 
over B. So again, I'm naming all these chords in relation to the capo. They're sounding up higher because of the capo. Uh, but this is a G over B shape, just fretting the fifth string at the second fret. Could also add in that second string third fret for a G over B. So the chorus is going to be going between D and uh, that G over B several times. And then we've got a B minor, uh, which you can just play uh, normally with a bar form like this. Another shape that he uses, which is nice, is uh, still hold that um, general shape of the B minor, but uh, lift up the bar so that that third string rings open and you get, if you play that, uh, leave the first string out, you got a B minor flat 13. So nice sounding chord there. There is a short little interlude that follows the chorus. Um, it starts on that D and then goes to B minor, which we already did, and then an E minor 7. So uh, one way to do that would be to play the E minor as we already were, but just to add on that second string, third fret, that would be an E minor 7. Something else that he does is this shape, which is actually the same bar on the bottom, but then third string, fourth fret, second string, third fret. So um, that does not have the third in it, so uh, technically it's not a, a minor chord. Um, it's just got the root and the fifth and the flat seven in there. Uh, but uh, totally works in place of that um, instead of the E minor 7, this chord, or this. Very close. And that's all the shapes uh, that appear in the song. So this song is in waltz time, not surprisingly, uh, given the title. And um, the first thing to just uh, get used to is just the bass line. So uh, here, again, I'm playing it with a pick, but you could be doing this with your thumb, too. Um, if you're going to play this finger style, but um, on the D, we got this kind of bass line with a six, four, four, five, four, four, six, four, four, five, four, four, just as a So just as a, as a basic um, kind of underlying bass line rhythm, uh, you could do that on the D. Six, four, four, five, four, four. I'm doing the, the numbers of the strings here. Of course, you could just keep it going on. Six, four, four, if you want. And then uh, just to cover it on the other two main chords of the song, when you go to an A, the bass line could be five, four, on the G, six, four, four, uh, again, uh, by string number. So that's a, a, a real good starting place for learning the song, is just try to, to get a really solid bass line. Of course, it doesn't always have to tick along exactly according to that pattern. I mean, he's a very free player himself. But this one I'm playing right now is on the D. It's just that bass line, but I'm adding in picking these uh, third and second strings on the two and three. One, two, three, two.
So that's a good kind of starting uh, rhythm uh, to use um, on the song. Another nice thing to know um, in here are just some little bass runs uh, that you can use. So when you're at, up at a G and you're going down to a, a D, you can walk it down. So from G, you can walk it down there. Um, that's something that uh, I'll probably do when I do the full version of this in a minute. Um, and then uh, similarly on the right is it going into the chorus till the band reach the end. On the step. So uh, as it's going into the chorus, it lands on that A and then you can go dum, boom, boom. to the chorus like that. So I'm gonna run through um, just instrumentally without singing uh, a verse pattern, a chorus pattern, and just a little interlude to get an idea. One, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> That last bit was just um, the little interlude um, coming out of the chorus. And losers in love. I'm going to give a go to a full version of the song. Oh, play me a blue song and fade down the light I'm sad as a proud man can be sad tonight Just let me dream on, oh just let me sway Where the sweet violins and the saxophones play And miss, you don't know me, but can we pretend that we care for each other till the band reached the end. One step for aching, two steps for breaking, waltzes for dreamers and losers in love. One step for sighing, two steps for crying, waltzes for dreamers and losers in love. They say love's for gamblers, so oh, the pendulum swings. I bet hard on love, and I lost everything. But don't send me home now, put a shot in my arm. We'll drink out old memories, and we'll drink in the dawn. And Mr. Ben Leader, won't you play one more time? Folding money in this pocket of mine. One step for aching, and two steps for breaking, 
Waltzing's for dreamers and losers in love One step for sigh and two steps for cry Waltzing's for dreamers and losers in love So there it is. So uh, as you can see, um, kind of play it freely, sometimes playing more with the pick, sometimes more with the fingers, break up the patterns. Uh, that's really the goal. Um, practice some patterns so that you can get a bunch of uh, options sort of under your fingers, and then you can kind of go with the feel of the song. So I hope you enjoyed playing this one. Um, Thanks for watching. Again, you can find all the charts uh, for this whole series over on Patreon, so check that out. And uh, catch you next time. Thanks.